I would like to thank you all for choosing the CCC as the Census 2020 community-based partner. We welcome everyone to our home. As many of you already know, our organization has been serving the Chinese American community in Texas since 1979. Over the past 40 years, we have worked hard for the 10,000 families that come to the organization seeking to empower their lives through education, culture, and the social service that we provide. As many of your organizations, we know there is so much more that we need to do to support our diverse communities. We are very honored to have the U.S. Census Bureau and TDW and Co., the 2020 Census Agency of Record for Asian American Community Outreach here today to share announcements and the key insights. We hope that our media partners will find value in reporting about the tremendous task at hand to get a full and accurate count of not only the Asian American community in Houston, but also to the greater community, the wider community of Texas and beyond. 我用中文先欢迎大家。大家早，我是文化中心执行长华启梅。今天非常荣幸，因为文化中心是Census 这两个机构都能够来修斯顿，邀请了媒体的朋友们一起分享，跟就是探索到重要的讯息。因为亚裔的社区，尤其是民众，是非常非常多元化的。我们讲不同的语言，我们来自不同文化的背景，所以呢，
uh, we want to speak to you about how important the census data affects our local community, especially here in Houston. Um, and we'll share with you some of the advertising and the communications outreach that are forthcoming to help encourage participation uh, by the community in the census. Um, I think one thing I'd say is there, there are also some very new and exciting ways that the census is being handled differently this year. And those are important updates that we'd like to share with you as well. But I guess to start, let me, let me share a video. Um, I think that will set the tone and, and, and the mood of the effort that we're about to embark upon from a communication standpoint. ¿Sabes quién soy? Soy todos los latinos que viven en este país. I think it's very fair to say that this is an, uh, an amazing, large and diverse country. And the goal of the census is to make sure that everyone, everyone shared and depicted here and beyond are, are counted and included in, in, in this communication. Uh, the reality is that in the Asian American community, in the Asian community, that knowledge and understanding of the census is very limited. And uh, for many, it may be even the first time they're, that they're participating in the census. And so when we say shape your future start here, we really want this community to truly understand how important it is, how vital it is, as uh, it brings public service support, it determines where funding goes to. Um, it's your participation, our participation, has a tremendous rippling effect on those, on those matters. And so today, please help me welcome a few speakers to share uh, perspectives with us. I'd like to welcome Kathy Lacey. Kathy is the director of the US Census Bureau's Denver Regional Office in Dallas, Regional Service Center. The Denver Regional Office is responsible for Census Bureau data collection activities for 12 states. I'm going to read all those states. Arizona, Colorado, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Utah, Wyoming, and of course here in Texas. Uh, Ms. Lacey will share a high-level perspective on the security, the safety, and the importance of the 2020 Census. And she'll also talk about some job opportunities that the Census Bureau has uh, for this enumeration. Uh, we also have with us Jennifer Kim. Jennifer has a title about as long as the number of states that Ms. Lacey covers. Uh, Assistant Division Chief in the Decennial Census Management Division of the U.S. Census Bureau. Ms. Kim will share timelines of the Census Bureau's uh, operations. Um, she'll help take a closer look at the physical uh, questionnaire. And we'll talk about content and language assistance um, uh, resources that are available to the community and how U.S. media can help us uh, share, share this information. Um, Jeanette Yip is here. Many of you probably know Jeanette. She is executive director of Boat People SOS of Houston. Uh, BP SOS has a very long history of meeting the needs of the Vietnamese and other Asian American and Asian communities here in uh, Houston. Ms. Yip will share um, uh, how the Houston branch provides social services, including disaster recovery, legal services, immigration, and family law services. 
um, to underserved and uh, immigrant refugee populations here in, in Southeast Texas and along the Gulf Coast communities. Uh, and finally, uh, Tim Wang is here. Tim is the founder and principal of TDW and Co. Um, TDW Co. is the advertising agency of record for the U.S. Census Bureau in the 2020 census this year. Um, Tim will speak about the communications outreach and some of the advertising that we hope will help encourage uh, participation and self-response. So with that, let me welcome Kathy to the stage. Please help me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. When we talk about the 2020 census, we really need everyone to make sure that we are successful for you and for the rest of the country. I just want to take a quick opportunity just to recognize our partnership staff that are working for the U.S. Census Bureau. We have some represented here as well as the LA office. If I could have you just stand up and wave so they know who you are. Mm. Mm. Alrighty, so we're going to be talking about the who, what, when, and where of the census. But we will start with the number one thing, which is the job that we do is one of the few jobs that's actually mandated by the Constitution. So we take great pride in this. So there will be a numeration in the year ending in zero. We only do it once every 10 years. So there's not a lot of prep time in, as such in trying to build up to this huge army that actually completes the census. Uh, we're going to be talking about the fact that it is April 1st. That's the reference day, but not the day that people, the only day people can respond. It's kind of interesting people have that thought sometimes. Um, and we're going to be talking about the reasons why you should be interested in this census and why it is so important to every community. All righty. So, it's easy, it's safe, and it's important. Uh, for this particular census, we've tried to make it as easy as possible for everyone to self-respond. So if you'll go on to the next slide, uh, you can self-respond through, traditionally, it has been just a paper questionnaire. For this particular census, we have added the opportunity to go online and complete your census questionnaire from the comfort of your home. Uh, from your iPhone while you're waiting to get your tag at the car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did that last week. Um, and, but also, you can call and get assistance. In both of those options, you can do in 13 languages, including English. So we try and make it as easy as possible for people to self-respond to this particular census. And then you have the last category, which is mailing the questionnaire. And that will be my mother, who's 87, who can't hear, and there's no way she's going on the internet, but she will respond with that paper questionnaire. So we just added to our options for this particular census. So it's safe and it's secure. You know, no one takes the safety and security of the data that we collect more seriously than the Census Bureau. Our ability to do what we do the other nine years and the census depends on our ability to keep your information confidential. So every census employee, we take an oath of confidentiality. Uh, whatever information we collect from the public on our list, we have committed that for life, we will not share that information with anyone. Even within the Census Bureau, I as a regional director, and I have the uh, Houston and Harris County, I cannot look at any of your census forms. I just know, yes, you completed a census form because it's only a need to know. So when you see enumerators out there, they have very little information, but their job's incredibly important. And then, of course, we talk about our online option. So we are up to date and constantly looking to ensure the data that we collect is secure. When people go online, they complete that, and then it goes into a database on the back end that people really can't get to. So we have done our best to make sure it is safe and it's secure because our reputation does depend on that. And then, of course, why? Power, knowledge, money. So the power of representation in Congress, the power of your local representation, depends on the counts, the population counts that the Census Bureau uh, provides at the end of the census. Knowledge. As a statistician, when I look at local communities, how can you plan for the future if you do not know what your community actually looks like today? So you need to know that to plan for the future. The census, even though very, very short, 
is the baseline for all statistics for the next 10 years. So we want to make sure you have the best information for planning for your community. And then of course we have $675 billion in federal funds that is distributed based on census counts. So when we take, we take our job very seriously. We want to make the invisible visible so that everyone is represented in this census. So, $675 billion, where do those dollars go? So, Medicare, Medicaid, that's the, the largest chunk right there. If you drove here, which most of us did, you saw a lot of highway construction, highway funding, grants, infrastructure, schools, hospital, emergency services. All of those are at least partially funded by federal funds that are distributed based on that census count. So it is critical for your local community to make sure you are counted. All righty, we actually have already started. Now, not here in the Houston area, but in remote Alaska, they have already started. So they started on January the 21st. Uh, for the Census Bureau, we have actually been working, but recruiting and preparing. So there are two ways that people will get either a questionnaire or an invitation to their home come the week of March the 12th. It's a staggered mailing, so not everybody is going to get it on March the 12th. So we will either you get it through the Postal Service, or if you are in an area of Texas where you do not receive your mail from the Postal Service at your home structure, then we will hand deliver those questionnaires. We actually are starting training for that particular operation as we speak. Okay, so our largest operation, so we encourage everyone to self-respond. Self You're gonna hear a lot about self-responding. Why? Because the information is more accurate and your information is safe. You're not telling anyone your information. It's just good. you're going directly to the internet. So that's the safe option, and it is the one that we encourage. So you can self-respond from March the 12th through July the 31st. If people choose not to, then I'll talk about what happens next. All righty, what will you see in the mail? So where people will receive their mail, they're going to receive an invitation to go online and it's going to have a code and I do encourage people to use that code because it is linked to a specific geographic area. They will receive a reminder letter starting March the 16th because we again want to encourage people to self-respond. Another reminder postcard. If people have not responded they will receive a paper questionnaire. That's where my mother is going to complete her paper questionnaire and mail it back in. And then one last reminder postcard. For each of these, we should see an increase in self-response. And then we have other operations. So if you're wondering, how is your grandmother going to be counted who is in a nursing facility? We actually have a whole set of operations that cover that. Uh, we call people who are living in unconventional housing. Uh, we have the people who actually don't live in a home. So we have an operation that gets that segment counted. Uh, military, uh, people overseas working for the military as well. So there are several operations that we call group quarters uh, that we are actually working on right now. April 1st, Census Day. April Fool's Day. That should help everyone remember the reference day. Now, the largest operation that you hear about, you'll hear nationwide, we're ha hiring half a million people. Here for the state of Texas, it's approximately, we will be offering about 50,000 jobs throughout the state of Texas. So we will hit the field going to back to those homes that have not self-responded. So when you see self-response of 70%, we are not done. For that last 30%, we will go to those households and complete that questionnaire with them. We're not done till each household is represented. And that goes through July the 24th. So in this day, how do you trust the person who's knocking on your door? Well, I never answer my door, so that's a problem. But 
all of our census employees will have a picture identification badge. It's gonna have their picture, it says who they work for, it has an expiration date. They can give you the phone number, uh, and there is an 800 number, you can call and verify, or you can go onto the census website and put their name in and see if they really do work for us. We also have a group of field representatives, as uh, Ed said before, that are collecting the economic indicators that are released every single month that basically measure how we're doing. So you may see those field representatives out there as well. They, whether one way or another, they will have a bag, they will have either a handheld device or a laptop with a great big census logo on it. So we are pretty easy to spot. When are we finished? We deliver counts to the president and December the 31st of this year. Uh, then apportionment data will be rolling out, redistricting data will be rolling out to the states beginning on April the 1st, 2021. So actually, we build up that army, we get the job done, and then we really go away, except for our ongoing surveys. Okay, and we are hiring. So uh, we actually have hired all the individuals we need to deliver those questionnaires. Uh, this weekend, we will start to hire for those individuals that will be going door to door to follow up on the households that have not responded. And our goal is to hire people who can speak the language and understand the culture of the person that's on the other side of the door. So we really have been pushing recruiting and we want to make sure that we are representing you in our workforce. Uh, so language skills are absolutely critical. You can see our website, www.census.gov backslash jobs. So if you're interested, please go online. We do have competitive pay rates, but the clock is ticking since we start selecting this weekend. All righty, thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. 안녕하세요. 저는 인구조사국 워싱턴 DC 본사에서 나온 제니퍼 김 부서장이고요. 여러분 만나서 반갑습니다. For those of you who didn't understand that in Korean, all I said was my name is Jennifer Kim. I am one of the program managers with the 2020 Census Program at the Census Bureau headquarters, and it's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, this event is especially meaningful for me. I am a 1.5 generation Korean American, and I grew up with parents who relied on the Korean media, and that was the major source of our information growing up. So I know the crucial roles that you all play and how important your voices are. So thank you for being here. So let me give you a quick snapshot of how we conduct the census. Our goal is to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. So how do we do this? First thing we do is we build a list of every address in the country, and then we motivate people to respond. And as Kathy shared, responding to the census on your own is easier than ever will provide three different modes and multiple language options. And for households that still do not respond on their own, we will follow up by visiting them. And finally, we will tabulate and release the census results. Who gets counted in the census? That's everyone. Everyone living in the US, regardless of their immigration status. In this, we count everyone living in homes and in group facilities such as college dorms and nursing homes. How does the Census Bureau invite everyone to respond to the census? Nearly every household will receive an invitation to participate either in the mail or from a census taker. About 95% of all households in the US will receive this in the mail. And about 5% will receive it from census takers and less than 1% of the households will be counted in person. And as we invite everyone to respond, we will have specialized outreach approaches to ensure that we count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. Okay, so let's take a look at the census questions. We ask how many people are in this household, whether the home is owned or rented. We ask the name, sex, age, race, and Hispanic origin of each person, and the relationship among household members. So why is it important to answer these questions? Kathy mentioned that census data helped guide more than $675 billion of federal funds annually. So for example, let's take the data on age. 
We know through this data how many school age children there are to help plan for education. Our recent census data show that there are more than 2.5 million school aged Asian children in the US. Through this data, we also know how many people are over the age of 65. So looking at our census data, there are more than 1.9 million Asians who are over the age of 65 who may qualify for Medicare. So this type of rich data come from people responding to the census. And I also like to stress that the citizenship question is not asked on the census. All right, all census responses are based on self-identification. This means that you get to determine the answers however you identify yourself. In this example for race and Hispanic origin questions, all respondents will be able to choose which category or categories pertain to them and also be able to use the writing boxes for more detailed responses. And please remember to include everyone living in your home, even if they're not related, such as roommates or renters, they need to be counted as well. And also please remember to include all newborn babies born by April 1st, 2020. This is important. Now, in order to make it even easier for you to respond to the census, we are offering the most robust language program that the Census Bureau has ever built. This means that households will be able to respond in English and 12 additional languages through the internet and through the phone. Uh, the 12 languages are listed on the left side of the screen here. And as you can see, almost half of them are Asian languages. Our communications campaign will also support numerous languages. So through our language options, you will be able to select your language on the online questionnaire and also provide your responses or ask questions through the phone starting March 12th. That's only a week from today. And there will be separate phone numbers for each of the languages. For Mandarin Chinese, Cantonese Chinese, Korean, Tagalog, Vietnamese, there will be separate phone numbers. And these numbers will be shared through our mail invitations and through our advertising. In addition, we are providing language guides on how to fill out the questionnaire and glossaries in total of 59 non-English languages that are listed on the right side there. This covers over 99% of all households in the US. Now, as people respond to the census on their own, they will be able to see how the regions are doing. Our response rates map currently features the response rates from the 2010 census. And then this slide, you can see a snapshot of how Houston did in 2010. Now, on March 20th, we are beginning to show the response rates for the 2020 census, and this will be updated daily. All right, so what are ways that the media members can help us? You as the Asian language media are important in reaching Asian communities, and we need your help sharing the key points. So you can help us with the following. Explain to your audience that the census responses are safe and confidential, as Kathy had mentioned. Also explain the importance of an accurate census count. Describe how census data are collected and used, and use our census data to help support any stories that you're working on. You can also utilize our Community Benefits Toolkit and help respondents understand how the census can help shape the community's future. Understand the census operational timeline and drive stories around it. Cover stories about census jobs and visit the census newsroom and sign up for our regular updates. Also follow us on social media where we will share news as well as interesting facts and figures. So thank you again for joining us on the 2020 census journey. Shape your future, start here. 우리가 만드는 미래 지금 시작하십시오. Thank you. Hello everyone. And thank you to CCC, TW and Company, the Census Bureau, and our media partners for having me here today. My name is Jeanette Yip, and I'm the Executive Director of Vote People SOS Houston. Our Vote People SOS Houston is an affiliate of a national organization in Virginia. Our mission is to empower, organize, and equip Vietnamese individuals and community in the pursuit of liberty and dignity. 
Our Houston branch provides legal services, health awareness, senior services, literacy, and other social direct services. Nationally, BPSOS is celebrating 40 years of services in the community, and our Houston office has been serving our community, our Vietnamese and Asian community for 20 years. We have four branches across the U.S. That's Virginia, Houston, Atlanta, California, Biloxi, and Bayou Labatra. Although our focus is on the growing population of our Vietnamese community, we do serve other Asian populations as well. Our staff uh, in Houston is bilingual um, in Vietnamese, Tagalog, Spanish, French, and Thai. Um, BPSOS is an organization that uh, many agencies and schools would reach out to us when they're needing someone to uh, speak Vietnamese. Uh, and an example, a few days ago, um, there was a fire that had happened uh, in an apartment complex where uh, four Vietnamese families were affected by this fire. Uh, what was amazing was that um, a lot of the agencies were not able to find someone to provide them with information that was in their own language. Uh, and so the uh, recovery materials was in English, so that was not much of help um, to the uh, families. And so we hope that eventually as a collaborative effort that we can work towards making these resources available to our community, especially when our Vietnamese community is the second largest uh, population next to Orange County in California. So a little bit of why census data is important to our organization, because it really allows us to understand the needs of our community and to seek funding in order to fill in that missing gap. It is also important that our Vietnamese community has representation and to ensure that our voices are heard. Without census data, we would not understand where our community is at and where the needs are. Census data also benefits us in providing resources and additional services in the community. That way, members, community members can access higher education and better jobs. It is also crucial in expanding programs and services based on the needs of the community. Our organization really rely on census data when it comes to grant writing to seek funding. For example, if there are more immigrants and refugees arriving into Houston every day, we're gonna to need to provide additional services such as ESL classes to the community members. Again, um, stressing how census data is so important because it really validates our community existence and it helps us fill in that missing gap when seeking funding. In fact, we are still using census 2010 data uh, for our proposals. So we hope that it, in the 2020 census that um, our proposal numbers will change and that with those large numbers that we'll be able to really provide additional services to our community. BPSOS Houston is committed into making sure that our community gets counted. Our office currently has two census organizers that are available to provide information and assistance on the census. They are there Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. They have been really working diligently in educating the community by doing outreach in the hard to count communities. They have been in the schools working with students and teachers. Students have been engaged in the different activities that we had for them just so that they have Census 2020 on their mind. They actually created posters of Census 2020 and banners, and we actually have those hanging in our office. So we want to thank the Sharp Sound High School students for doing that for us. We're also holding uh, events to promote the census, events such as the Census Food Drive, which will be on April 4th, uh, Census Health Day, which will be on a April 11th, Census Senior Day, which will be on May 8th. These events are really to be able to aim to reach to those hard to count communities. We are hosting these events to encourage participation. We want to motivate households to fill out the census questionnaire. We also know how community, we also know our community well enough. We know that they will have questions. We know that they're going to need assistance 
And so we need to be there in person to really provide that support for them. On top of these events, we're going to be running PSA ads, um, also in the newspapers, in the magazines. We're going to be also hosting TV shows to talk a little bit about the census. Um, and we found that, you know, this is the only way to really alert our community to, for them to, you know, have census 2020 on their mind. Also, the rural areas is also really one of the hardest area to be able to count. They are also the area that has the least resources. So the best way to really reach out to these community, because we, we are at capacity to be able to reach all of our community, that we are planning to text reminders to these communities. And text reminders will look like, since this is coming, since this is here, have you gotten your postcard? Do you need any type of assistance? This goes to say that we need to use every possible way to reach out to our communities using social media, ethnic media, events, texting. This is really the only way that we'll be able to help our community. Um, and also we will try to be, although we can't be in all of the rural areas, we are gonna be in some of the temples uh, to be able to provide that assistance in the rural area, probably one or two. So everyone, not just only organizations, but everyone really need to think holistically how are we gonna reach our communities? So uh, I feel connected to the census, not only through my work, but through my personal experience. As an immigrant myself, I remember how hard it was for my family to navigate the system um, because they were very limited in English. As you may know that most Asian families rely on their oldest child to translate everything. And so I was one of them. <laughs> and I remember that you know, my parents usually will have two different stacks when they have mail. One stack was bills need to pay right away, and the other stack was way in a corner where um, it was not important, we'll get to it when I have time. And so I saw the large census envelope in that one stack in the corner when I was walking um, to the kitchen to get water that day. And um, vividly I remember that um, I had saw at that time, um, they had a lot of census commercials, and I remember the commercial saying, saying that the census is coming and that everyone has to be counted. It's a population count. Uh, and so I pulled that big um, census envelope out and I told my mom that we have to fill this out because I saw it in a commercial. Uh, and uh, she said, is it important? I say, yes, it certainly is. And so I sat down with her, went through the questions. It was very short. I remember being very short. Um, and we were able to get it done, and uh, we, um, we mailed it in. Um, so that story really reminded me of how important it is to really educate our youth. Because our youth are the ones are, that are going to tell their parents that I want to be counted. I knew that I wanted to be counted. Uh, so that's why I really pushed my parents to do that. And that's why we were, that's the reason why we had so many outreaches into the schools is that very reason, is to really engage our students um, to see the importance of it. Because I know many of our students are from uh, families, foreign born families, and many of them have never been, uh, have never uh, seen the census before. So they, this may be the very first time. And so, um, I know that back then, there was not much resources uh, that were translated in, in language. Everything was actually in English. Um, and so not much resources. And I was also living in a small town. So media was very, very important to really get that information out. But looking now at 2020, since it's today, seeing that the census are making these languages available, online and by phone, I found that to be just really impressive. Um, and although it doesn't solve the language barrier issue, and children are still gonna need to get the parents to complete the census, but um, having that information in their language really helps a great deal. So uh, in conclusion, recalling from the personal uh, story that I just told, that how media 
is really critical and very important to get the census information out. And this is the only way that census 2020 will be a success. So media partners here today, um, on the screen there's a direct uh, link on our website on our Texas community and there are helpful resources regarding the 2020 census and beyond. So please share them with everyone. Also, I want to remind you that if there are any questions, we also have set up a um, texting, census texting uh, number for anyone who wants to text us. They can text us in any language. We'll have staff to support to answer any of the questions. And that text number is 281-409-3746. And also, we'll be providing assistance um, on our main line, 281-530-6888. So in conclusion, although I know that there will be still challenges in reaching everyone, but we need to make sure that we are utilizing every piece of technology that, technology that we have with the ethnic media, social media, Texas, I mean texting, so that we can get the word out to the community. Our organization is here for our community. We are all working on a larger mission here to sustain and ensure the longevity of our Asian American communities. Thank you, everyone. Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, give my gratitude uh, to Chi Mei and the CCC for your wonderful hospitality here. I love the southern hospitality here in Houston. It's a beautiful city. So thank you for hosting us and uh, allowing us to be able to share some of our work here today uh, alongside our colleagues uh, from the Census Bureau. My name is Tim Wang. I'm the founder and principal of TDW & Co. Uh, our team is extremely proud to be a part of this integrated communications team, uh, as we call it, as Team YNR, uh, serving as your official Asian American communications partner uh, for the 2020 Census. Uh, it's been a long journey uh, for us to get to this point today. Um, many, many months and years of planning and research and testing, and just being able to, to get to this point where next week, we will begin to be able to have the opportunity to participate and to respond. Next week, you guys, it's right around the corner. Um, and we're especially excited right now that we actually have an opportunity to give you guys a sneak peek at some of the advertising creative that's going to launch next week. No one has seen this publicly yet, so uh, we're really, really honored and privileged to be able to share some of this with you today. So uh, really, before going into the work, I just want to talk a little bit about the integrated communications and outreach that we have to our Asian American audiences. Paid advertising and creative and media is definitely a very, very critical part of that piece, whether it's through TV or radio or print. Many of you guys here in this room are helping to facilitate that. Uh, but also non-traditional ways of outreach, billboards or grassroots events or you know, seeing things in supermarkets, uh, those are all really critical uh, aspects to our outreach as well. Uh, but in addition to paid media, uh, we also have really strong partnerships all across the country, partnerships especially with CCC here in Houston and BPSOS Houston, and being able to really uh, rely on trusted advocates, people that are key leaders of influence to really share uh, the word out about the census. Many of you may or may not know that actually this week is uh, the week where we have statistics in schools, uh, and this is the week where uh, schools all across the country, uh, K through 12, are right now talking about census in their school curriculum and the importance of the data and how that can help to uh, shape uh, the respective communities' futures. Um, and so, as you know, Jenna has just shared is the story of how sometimes our youth are the ones that are really bringing home the message to the families about uh, things that are important. And so we're really uh, uh, leaning in on that. Uh, but last but not least, the media, the media relations and the editorial, the stories, the coverage that we heavily rely on to being able to share 
to some of our most vulnerable communities. So before diving into the work, I talked a little bit about the many months leading up to actually getting to this point in time right now. And a lot of that was spent on research. And so extensive research was conducted to really understand the barriers, the attitudes, and the motivators for why our Asian communities should participate. And what we learned is, in fact, actually, the Asian American community, among all the different cultural groups, the Asian American community had the lowest level of familiarity and understanding of what the census is and why it's important. And Kathy just mentioned earlier, really what it comes down to is money, power, and knowledge. So just think about that level of, of gap that we have in the understanding for what's really critical at this moment. Uh, we also learned a lot about what they do care about related to census benefits. And you see them up here that public funding can be applied towards schools and educational programs. We have healthcare facilities and services and public infrastructure and things like roads. And we know that here in Texas, we, got, we have a lot of roads. So we definitely need to get our fair share of resources for that. Um, and we also learned in some of our research, what are some of the motivating messages that would really help our community to really respond. And uh, what we found out was, again, public funding being a very, very important key topic. Also, just this notion of our community wanting to contribute to the benefit of the greater good. Participation as, as a civic duty, as a part of just the American way of life, was also a key benefit that we found that was important. And last but not least is just representation in, in government, but not just government, but culturally. Uh, we talk about the Asian American community being one of the fastest growing populations, and, and that's no different here in Texas. Uh, so, just talking a little bit about the campaign itself and just the timelines, we have the awareness phase, uh, which we're currently in, and so we have a lot of our advertising pieces that are in market today, really trying to bridge that education and knowledge gap for our Asian American communities. And pretty soon here, sneak peek of some of our motivation ads that will be running beginning next week, uh, really encouraging our community to respond and responding now. Uh, and last but not least, we have phase three and phase four, which is our reminder and thank you phases. In the reminder phase, you'll see additional set of advertising and creative that would speak to uh, the census taker themselves and really humanizing the census taker going door to door and just being uh, available and ready if you have not yet responded to the census. So uh, next slide, we'll just share a little bit about some of maybe what you've seen in the market already. This is during the awareness phase and it's, I'm just reflecting on Jeanette, some of your comments earlier about how, you know, you're kind of looking at the mail and also being kind of the conduit to your household about information that's important. And so that was a really key insight that we found as a part of our research and how we wanted to tell the story to communicate the importance of the census. And there's a dialogue that you'll see here across the six different language groups that we were responsible for and reaching out to and a dialogue that you have between a father and a daughter whether it's in a small business environment, or whether it's in the home, living room, whatever that might be, but something that we felt that was very relatable and very natural that we would see in our environment, and in our Asian American communities. And so the nature of the dialogue comes from this notion of, hey, you know, we're closing up shop or we're you know, wanting to go and visit grandmas, but there's traffic and so a lot of that is um, you know, uh, contributing to just, you know, being able to understand population data so we can have more understanding of roads. And, and so the kid then says, oh, kind of like the census, like the 2020 census, I'm learning all about it in school. And so that's kind of the nature of how this conversation comes up about the awareness around what the 2020 census is, its benefits, and finding out more information. Now, for the sneak preview for our motivation phase, um, we're really excited to talk about this because uh, the time is now uh, for us to respond. And uh, the setup for this story is really around three good friends. 
that are about to embark or participate in a normal activity. It could be playing chess in the park. It could be, you know, getting together, let's say, at a computer learning class at their local community center. It could be going for a, you know, afternoon stroll or jog. Or it could be even just a backyard barbecue. And so the story develops how you have three friends and one of them is late. And then they talk about why they're late. They were going to a health clinic across town. And so they had to rush over here. So they're a little bit late. And so this kind of friendly banter between, between these friends ensues on what's more important, health clinics or representation in government? And then there's a third person that's the voice of reason. So without further ado, for the first time publicly being shared, uh, we'll share with you a sampling of our motivation uh, TV spots in four of our audience's languages. Yeah,你们两个都对，可光说有什么用呢？填好二零二零年的人口普查，就可以协助公共资金的分配。比如地方医疗，更多的政府席位，想要给自己发声啊，赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上二零二零census.gov完成
So in TV, it's very, very natural that you have to have the language ability to be able to act and perform and speak in that community. But for print advertisement, we did not stop there. We made sure that everyone that was casted, that was shot, that was filmed, that appeared on an advertisement was truly ethnically, culturally from that audience. And so we're very, very proud of that. That was something that the Bureau had wanted us to do. And so um, we did not cut any corners. Um, last but not least, the driver here, right, is to the response. And so as you saw on some of the end cards for the TV spots, you had the specific language URL where you could go and respond online, as well as a dedicated phone number which you could have uh, a response through the phone in that particular language. Uh, so this is a sample of what the 2020census.gov site looks like. In addition to that, Jenny also mentioned about the tremendous amount of language resources that we have, 59 languages that have uh, glossary guides, and that's also indicated here uh, with the intent on being able to reach 99% of all households in America. And last but not least here, we also have 2020 census press kits uh, that are available in your respective languages. Um, our team will email these to you after the event, so be on the lookout um, from our team for that. Uh, we are also increasingly creating more resources uh, throughout the campaign, uh, and so uh, we look forward to sharing some of those with you as they become available. Um, again, this is a sampling of some of the advertising that is going to be reaching out to the Asian American communities. Uh, there's a host of other materials that are also available. Uh, so we look forward to our, our motivation phase coming very, very soon. So as I close here, um, perhaps the most important learning from the months and months, years of planning and, and for us to get to this point is um, having the right message and being able to specifically reach that audience is so important. But what also is equally important is the messenger. And that means you, um, media partners and friends. Uh, your outlets have been serving our families and communities for generations. The information that you provide goes beyond just news. Uh, in fact, actually, you are a vital resource and gateway of knowledge to our most vulnerable communities. And we hope that you'll share the excitement that we have in being able to get into this next phase, our motivation, and also share the excitement of getting a sneak peek of what's to come. Uh, and if there's one key takeaway from all of this, okay, it's that our communities are going to start receiving an invitation to participate, to respond next week. Okay, as soon as next week, March 12th. How are we going to respond? We need your support to communicate that the census is here and our time is, is now. Your involvement in sharing this information will be critical for us in being able to achieve our 2020 census mission of counting everyone once, only once, and in the right place and shaping the future for all of our communities. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tim, and thank you, everyone. You know, I'm, I'm just struck, um, as each of you were speaking, about how much has changed in um, my community, in this community, in our neighborhoods, even my, my family over the last 10 years. I think about, I have a young child now, I have older parents, and the school services, the Medicare and health services that they're all gonna need. Um, this comes once every 10 years in the data that's collected uh, will inform decision making for the next 10 years and just imagine how quickly uh, things will change over that period of time uh, if you don't participate. And it's encouraging that the Census Bureau, uh, Jeanette, your organization, Chime, your organization, are investing so much time and resource to encourage participation, your acknowledgement and understanding about how important this effort is. Um, Kathy and Jennifer, the, the language resources, the communication resources that are put behind this, um, I think it's just a remarkable effort. Um, there's such a lack of 
Asian data in anywhere. It's just not very readily available. Uh, if I think about, for you in the media, when we talk about circulation numbers, when you talk about your viewership, uh, it's all based according to census data. And without accurate counts of this data, your uh, publications may not be well represented uh, in readership and understanding and advertising dollars and marketing because these, these decisions are based on uh, the availability of census data and other data sources. So um, thank you so much. And thank you all for coming. Uh, we truly appreciate uh, your voice in the community as trusted partners. Thank you.